Hello all. Welcome to the third episode of Living Figuratively with your host, me, Judy Takis. And I feel like I should have worn a ball gown to descend down the stairs, but I'm wearing my Michigan shirt in solidarity with the state I love because they're having all kinds of troubles right now with the corona and the protests and everything. And so I'm, you know, sending them a little Michigan love. Um, Living Figuratively is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the faces and figures of fascinating people you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Uh, past couple episodes, I have talked about my own work that I have done and shown, told you my inspirations and motivations. Today, I'm gonna to talk about works from my collection because many artists are art collectors also, and I'm hoping that the, you will be inspired in this show, even if you're not an artist yourself, to become an art collector, and especially a collector of figurative art, which is what I do, what I love, and it's my, my personal favorite. Um, one of the ways in which I decorate my home with figurative art is something called the wall full of small. And that's what you have here. This is just a little snippet of a staircase where I've decided to put all kinds of smaller, affordable, a la primas and drawings, which in the figurative art world, those are easier to purchase, easier to, to come by, um, and they're smaller and they're more affordable. And so you can pepper them in. Some of these are mine, some of these are works by others. Um, one of my uh, decorating concepts with the wall full of small is everything should be either here or there. So like if I'm gonna line up something, I'm gonna line it up definitely. Like I'm not gonna put this one over one inch and make it look a little unintentional. Um, and if I'm not lining something up, then it's definitely not lined up. Like for instance here, this is definitely not lined up. And I try to have enough space between things, but I certainly don't drive myself crazy trying to have the exact same amount of space between stuff. Um, and my other, my other guiding principle with this is don't sweat the holes in the wall. Put the holes in the wall, hang the paintings. If it's wrong, move it. Nobody will see the, how many holes in the wall you put before you hung the painting in just the right place. And if you're a renter, just make a resolution that before you move, you're gonna patch them and call it a day. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't get all crazy with that. I'm gonna start talking about, you know, my, um, the, the different works on the wall. Right here, we have this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous drawing by uh, Sadie Valeri. Uh, Sadie Valeri is one of the masters of the Atelier movement, which is taking the world by storm right now. Uh, they're taking the figurative art world by storm right now. Um, she is, uh, she has an atelier in San Francisco and an atelier basically is a French word for school where they teach the French Academy method of, um, of drawing and painting, which is, uh, it's a very sort of a regimented long process, uh, where you start by drawing from plaster casts of classical sculpture. And you spend several years doing that, and then you move on to um, working from the actual figure, and you spend several years doing that, and then you move on to uh, painting the actual figure. Um, it's a wonderful, very, you know, rigorous way to learn how to draw and paint really, really well. Um, Sadie, one of the things I love, love, love about this drawing is how she was able to get such amazing solidity and three-dimensionality with her very gentle feathery um, graphite strokes and just the, the pencil sharpening process that goes into making strokes like that is a ritual in and of itself. You sharpen your pencil to this beautiful, beautiful needle point. Um, Sadie's, Sadie's work, is, check, her, check out her uh, website, Sadie Valeri Atelier. Dot com. Um, I'll have all the information on my website of all the people that I talk about. And she has some wonderful online instructional um, things that you can sign up for and have access to her 
really, really beautiful um, professional videos where she shows you her process and she gives away all her secrets, essentially. Um, you know, she's a wonderful, wonderful instructor. So that is an awesome piece from my collection. Um, I'm going to move down over here to another piece from my collection. This one is uh, by Karen Offit, who is, um, she, to me, she is a painter's painter. She embodies exactly what I try to do with painting, where your brush strokes look like brush strokes and they look like life at the same time. So, um, like one of the things that she does with this, her, the, the dark and light pattern and the, um, the contrast, even though it's a little snippet of a, a little snippet of a head, it, everything about it is essentially perfect. And it's on the, the silver background, which, which I thought just really made it very gem-like. And so I framed it in, um, in silver leaf because it just, you know, really complemented the silver leaf that was in the background. And I just love, love, love her work. I've taken a workshop with her as well. Um, and her workshop to me was very life-changing too. Some of the things that I learned, I took away with me and I use them, I use them all the time. And, um, you know, I, she's, she's an awesome artist. So check out her website too, Karen Offit. She is actually a master instructor at Atelier Dojo in Austin, Texas. So both of them, I have, I have taken, you know, workshops and learned with them and they're both, both awesome instructors. Um, all right, now we're going to move along a little bit to, I'm going to show you one of mine. Uh, this little piece right here. Ooh, you wait a second. You know what? When I was talking about Sadie, I forgot to show you. She's actually, um, featured in this book by Jill, Juliet Aristide, who is also one of the masters of the Atelier movement. And Sadie does these gorgeous paintings too. She's not just a drawer, she's a painter. This is a beautiful, beautiful still life. She can paint a shell like no one else can. And she signed her, she signed this for me too. So it was really, really good. All right, moving along to one of my own. I've got a teeny tiny piece up here. And the reason I'm spotlighting this is because it is probably the tiniest piece that I have. It's on a little five by seven wraparound canvas like this. And the way that I framed it is, um, is something that you, you can do at home too. Um, you, I put it on top of the frame because I thought that the, the little wraparound canvas just made a nice, nice little statement and I didn't want it to be, to be behind it. I have a second one, a sister of hers, and, um, I could frame that one the same way too, but I just haven't yet. All right. So now I'm going to move up the hill. Speaking of drawing. This is, uh, these are some quick drawings of mine, not the methodical um, atelier drawings, which I have yet to do one that's even remotely, you know, remotely as good as, as any of the real good atelier drawings. But these are quick gestures, which you do in life drawing class, essentially, and life drawing groups, where the model is nude and she does different gestures for like a minute or five minutes, and you do, you know, dozens and dozens of them, depending on how long the, the pose is. And then what I do is I take the best ones and I plaster them together into a composition and create, a, you know, a new piece of art from several of the gestures. Right here, I've got a beautiful little work by Carol Arnold. Um, and I'll tell you how this particular work came into my possession. Um, every year I go to the Portrait Society of America conference and at the Portrait Society of America, one of the, my favorite things that they do there is the six by nine art auction, where basically they ask a whole bunch of really, really good artists to paint a six by nine little painting and they are for sale for $275 a piece, which is a very, very good deal for, you know, some of these tiny, tiny masterpieces. Um, and the, the, uh, the beauty of it, the beauty of it is it's no, it's not like any other art auction. Um, it's that the only people that are allowed to buy them are the artists that are signed up for the conference. So 
basically what this particular art auction, it's not like the other, other art auctions, what this does is it makes um, uh, beautiful paintings by really good artists accessible to artists to buy. Because I think as an artist, for me, one of the really important things is to surround myself with work that inspires me and that informs my work. Um, so like, I have good pieces that I will actually take off the wall and have breakfast with. Like, it, that's why I like to just, you know, be, I'm, I'm real comfortable with taking something off the wall, keeping it in my studio for a while, putting it back up. I keep a lot of art in my studio. Um, and when I say have breakfast with it, that means that I sit there and I stare at it and I try to figure out the secrets and try to look and see how, how the painter achieved a particular thing and sort of burn good images into my head. That's, that's what I try to do. And you know, if, if I feel like that Rembrandt is going to be the one that that's going to inspire me for that day, then I'll get out a Rembrandt book because obviously I don't have an actual Rembrandt. Um, but this work is by Carol Arnold, who is a phenomenal uh, plein air painter, and she's won many Portrait Society awards. And I was fortunate enough to be able to get uh, to acquire this at the Portrait Society of America 6x9 auction. And now it's on my wall full of small. This, this painting is um, it's an a la prima, and it looks most certainly like it was done from life which is one of the beauties of an a la prima painting. A la prima means basically where you put down a color, you do it kind of all at one fell swoop, one, you know, two, three, four hour sitting. You put down a color, you put down another color, you, you paint it all at one, at one fell swoop. It's not a building process like where you might one day put down your value pattern and the next day sort of build up from there. Um, and that's one of the reasons why a la prima works can be more affordable because there isn't as much time, artist time, put into it. Um, and I, I'm going to tell you a little bit, one, one, more, one more thing about um, the time aspect. A lot of times people will ask, how long did that take you? That's kind of the number one question that people, you know, when they look at a work of yours, that's sort of the, their, their knee-jerk question that they ask. They always say, how long did it take you to paint? And um, the answer, no matter whether it's a, you know, a two-hour a la prima, a five-minute gesture, or a 150-hour complex painting, the answer is always a lifetime. Because when you do the two-hour a la prima, you have the experience of having done maybe another 200 a la primas before that. And um, many of them end up in the trash. Many of them end up getting painted over. Many of them don't work out well. But for every drawing you do, or every painting you do, you learn something and it adds to your accumulated knowledge. Not to mention all the training that went into it before you started doing the, you know, the, the actual creation of the little pieces. Um, so there, that's where the lifetime is. Um, and when you ask that question about a piece that really did, you know, where that many hours are put into that particular piece, like we're a very complex piece, all that learning is, you know, in, in addition to the experience that you've brought to that painting, all that learning is piled up under the top layer of paint. It really only matters what ends up being on the top layer because the rest of it is all what you've done to get there and what you've done to build the richness of getting there. And um, so that's where, you know, it might be 100 hours, it might be 60 hours. And sometimes your best pieces, the, the planets line up and it takes you, you know, just a very few minutes to get those perfect little strokes. But there's a lifetime of experience that gets to that perfect little stroke that, you know, where the planets line up and, and the world, the world's all right. All right, I'm going to scoot up the stairs a little bit here and get to the last piece that I want to tell you about. Um, this one right here is through a very ser serendipitous, lucky, you know, being a 
being on Facebook at the right time and um, jumping on an opportunity, I was able to get a hold of a uh, high school drawing by one of my art art idol art heroes. Stephen Assale is a phenomenal figurative painter. He's kind of one of the the legends, and like he does gorgeous stuff, gorgeous stuff like this, you know, like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flesh, beautiful um, paint quality. Like it looks like life. It looks like paint. You can, you know, it's it's like exactly what what I uh, what I love in in painting. And I was able to get this book of his. Um, I think on eBay, somebody, I think it's out of print, but somebody was selling it. In fact, it says, for Josh, Happy New Year, thanks for stopping by, Stephen Sale in 2012. So I'm not sure who Josh is, but I'm glad he put his book on eBay, because now it's mine. Um, I was able to get this gorgeous drawing of Stephen Sales from high school, and it's actually... It's actually signed, which is which is wonderful because usually, you know, your high school sketchbooks, you you don't sign the pages. You just flip the page and you do the next, you know, little high school drawing. Um, but it's it's beautiful, and I had it specially framed by Susie Porges Studio, which is when I have something that needs to be framed in glass, I take it to Susie Porges Studio uh, because they just do a beautiful, phenomenal job. And um, what's so special about this drawing, I had to have it specially framed in glass where the, the glass shows through because there was another drawing on the back. And I wanted the other drawing on the back to show. I, di I didn't want the option to like flip it and you know be able to hang it both ways. If I you know really feel like it, then I'll take it out and flip it. But um, he did this little, this must have been also in high school, he might have gone to the Metropolitan, I don't know. Um, did it looks like a master copy of perhaps a uh, Rubens? I don't even know, but um, it's beautifully framed and it's on my wall full of small. And the pumpkin colored uh, paint shows through around it, so I I just I love the love the whole look of it. So anyway, so thank you for joining me at my little tiny little wall full of small art tour so far. Um, and just just so you know, all the works that are not my own and are for my collection are not for sale. But all the works that you saw here that are that are mine are for sale and you can find the information on my website, judytakis.com, on my online shop. And the works by artists from my collection, which is Sadie Valeri, uh, Karen Offit, Carol Arnold, and Stephen Assale, I've put their um, websites and their uh, Instagrams on my, web on my website, so you can go, you know, check out their work and maybe buy something from them. You can just contact their galleries, con you know, sign up for their workshops. They're um, phenomenal, phenomenal artists. And let me see, I'm trying to think whether there was some other closing message that I had today. I maybe, maybe that's about it. Um, so thank you for joining me next week. Same bad time, same bad channel, six o'clock Thursday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Join me and I will be talking about everybody's favorite painting of mine, um, Highland Matriarch. And in case you don't remember it, it's the woman with the horns. See you next week.